And we are so stoked to have in the studio a very, very, very special guest, Nick Arfour, who is in here because he's filming uh, with Shine TV for Soul Sessions. But uh, you also had a role as Simba as well in The Lion King, which is pretty exciting. So welcome to the studio. Good morning. Thanks, Nerida, Andrew, for having me in today. So oh, obviously, so the, the obvious question really is which one is more intimidating? You know, being on the Soul Sessions, obviously massive nationwide <laughs> uh, program or, you know, little production called The Lion King, like whatever. Obviously, you know, it's the Soul Sessions, right? Yes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, they both can be pretty pretty uh, nerve-wracking in their own ways, but um, the small crowds can sometimes get to you because you're, you're in... You know, you're right in the face and they can oh, see you. So you can see, see the reactions yeah. and you can see <laughs> That'd be kind of quite intimidating. So your role as Simba, how long did you do that for? I uh, first landed the role in 2013. Yeah. Uh, I was in the Australian cast. Okay. Yep. Where there was a big Kiwi contingent in that as well. And then I did that for two years and then I did about th- four years in London. So wow. probably oh, six years all up. Man. And then wow. three weeks here. Just so six, about six years lying around. <laughs> <laughs> Been waiting to jump that one, Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is it like being in a production where you are doing the same thing, the same lines over and over and over? What's that like? Um, <laughs> you know what? It's uh, doing that night and night for, for six years. Yeah. It, um, it, it can do a lot to your body. It can oh, do, um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, so you gotta you gotta really learn how to how to take care of the body and the voice and so I learned so much in terms of technique mm. um and how to look after, you know, the vessel and, and that. But in terms of the story, as long as sort of there's honesty and and how you connect to the story, every night is gonna be different in a in, in a way. Mm. Um because there's a there's a new crowd in every night too, and that always changes things a lot from night to night. Right. And for it's them, the same script. Yeah, mm. for them it's the first time they've seen it, regardless, right? So it's well, actually I suppose not, because a lot of people come back and see it again and again. A so lot, a lot do. Yeah. But even even hearing it through them, like I'll have people come for about four or five times and they'll wow. say, Look, every time I've come to see it, it's different or really? oh. I, I've picked up something different. And even me, when I've gone back to watch the show in rehearsals, I'll see things that I I didn't recognize. So wow. Actually, we should probably explain it a little bit too, but just because the the Lion King show, if you haven't been to the Lion King, you're not aware of it. It's not just like a oh you're that character. Like there's a huge amount of, I mean stuff feels like a really underwhelming way to say it, but in terms of yeah. the way that the sets design and the, the the characters, it's not just you wearing a bit of face makeup. Yeah, no, you're you're right. It's one of those things you you have to go and watch because if you know the movie, yeah, you think of all the iconic scenes. You're like, okay, the the first scene when when um, they hold up the baby on the rock and yeah. Yeah. and the canyon, like, how are they going to do that on stage? But the masterminds behind the the puppetry and the costume and the set design, it just it's just amazing how the simple things are so powerful. Yeah, mm. um, and that's how that's how I would say it in a nutshell. The way they brought it to life. That's what I love about theatre, actually, just the way that they can do that. So, yeah. do you have any sort of hankering to I don't know audition or get into any other production? Yeah, uh, since coming back, I mean, I've been back in the country for about a year now. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, for you know, for a lot of people that are coming into the country right now, it's just trying to get back and settle into this new normal, you know. Mm. And so I haven't done much creatively, um, but there are things sort of starting to pop up and they've all come at once. You know? nice. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's starting with Soul Sessions and then there's some theatre coming on uh, later on in the year. And there's a, a a short film that I'm I'll be shooting very very soon as well. Oh, exciting! So, can yeah, you tell or, us anything or, about what the, what the short film is about, or is it still very on the down low? I can. I look. I'll say it's called Mysterious Ways. Uh huh. And I I can say that it um it confronts some really um sort of hard to talk about issues, and they are faith and sexuality. Mm, so, wow. Yeah. So it's a it's it's a beautifully told and written story, and yeah. we can't wait to sort of bring it to life. Mm, that's so we awesome. feel very privileged to have you around to, to shoot it anyway. So on behalf of New Zealand, thanks for coming back. Uh, yeah. Really appreciate that. Thanks and, for um, having me in. Yeah, and thanks for being part of the Soul Sessions as well. Um, just a real treat to have somebody with uh, you know your experience join us as well. And I hope the audience is nice to you. They're generally a pretty good <laughs> <crowd>. <laughs> No, thank you so much for having me.